Hello, today is April 6, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. On April 26, 1954, the Salk polio vaccine filled trials, including 1.8 million children, beginning at Franklin Sherman Elementary School in McLean, Virginia. Children in the United States, Canada, and Finland participated in the trials, which used for the first time the now standard double-blind method, whereby neither the patient nor the attending doctor knew the inoculation was the vaccine or the placebo. One year later, on April 12, 1955, researchers announced the vaccine was safe and effective and quickly became the standard part of childhood immunization in America. In the ensuing decade, polio vaccine would all but wipe out the highly contagious disease in the Western Hemisphere. Polio, known officially as poliomyelitis, is an infectious disease that has existed since the ancient times and it's caused by a virus. It occurs most commonly in children and can result in paralysis. The disease reached epidemic proportions throughout the first half of the 20th century. During the 1940s and the 1950s, polio was associated with the iron lung a large metal tank designed to help polio victims suffering from respiratory paralysis breathe. President Franklin D. Roosevelt was diagnosed with polio at the age of President Franklin D. Roosevelt was diagnosed with polio in 1921 at the age of 39 and was left paralyzed from the waist down and forced to use leg braces and a wheelchair for the rest of his life. In 1938, Roosevelt helped found the National Foundation for Infancy Paralysis, later renamed the March of Dimes. The, organiza the organization was responsible for funding much of the research concerning the disease, including the SOC trial, sock vaccine trials. The man behind the original vaccine was a New York born physician and in, intro, intro myologist Joseph Jonas Salk, 1914 to 1995. Salk's work on the anti influenza vaccine in the 1930s while at the University of Michigan School of Public Health led him in 1952 at the University of Pittsburgh to develop the vaccinated, the inactive polio vaccine, the IPV, based on kill, a killed virus strain of the disease. In 1954, field trials that followed the largest in U.S. history at the time, were held in Salk's former University of Michigan colleague, Dr. Thomas Francis, Jr. In the late 1950s, Polish-born physician and virologist Albert Staben, Staben 1906 to 1993, treated, tested an oral vaccine, OPV, he had created for, he had created from a weak, weakened live virus, the vaccine easier to administer and cheaper to produce than socks became available for use in America in the early 1960s and eventually replaced socks 
as the vaccine of choice for most countries. Today, polio has been eliminated throughout much of the world due to the vaccine. However, there is still no cure for the disease and it persists in a small number of countries in Africa and Asia. And just a little tidbit about polio. We had an older teacher, music teacher, and I remember she had to hold her right hand when she was writing on the chalkboard and she had the that thing that the chalk went in to make music lines. And I remember her holding her shaky, holding her hand. She had polio in that right hand. And in school, when we took the polio vaccine, they put it in a sugar cube to do a couple drops of the vaccine and we took it by mouth. So those are just my little tidbits on the polio vaccine. Now I'd like to bring you another This Day in History. A crowd outside 254 West 54th Street in New York City on this day in 1927 would have been waiting for the curtain of the Puccini Opera. On this day in 1957 or 67, they would have been waiting for a filming of an episode of Password or maybe Captain Kangaroo. On April 26th in 1977, however, the crowd gathered outside the Midtown address was waiting and hoping for a chance to enter what would soon become a global epicenter of disco craze and the most famous nightclub in the world, Studio 54, which opened its doors for the very first time. The impressors behind Studio 54 were Steve Rabul and Ian Shergog, college roommates at Syracuse University who got into the nightclub business after their first adventure, a chain of steak restaurants failed to flourish. But before making Manhattan, before taking Manhattan by storm and becoming famously for opening the shamelessly excluding all but the most chic, famous and beautiful patrons for their establishment. Rubel and Shurug were running a far less perpetual operation called the Enchanted Garden in the far reaches of Queens. A woman who deserves the lion's share of the credit for making 54 into a, the celebrity playground it became was Carmen de Elizo. A-L-E-S-S-I-O, a public relations entrepreneur in the fashion industry whose Rolodex included names like Bianca Jagger, Liza Minnelli, Andy Warhol, and Truman Capote. Her buzz building turned the grand opening into a major item in New York gossip columns and her later efforts having Bianca Jagger pose atop a white horse at her 30th birthday party, stoked the public's fascination with Studio 54 even further. Not just the unusual celebrities, sus suspects, actors, models, musicians, and athletes, but also political figures like Margaret Trudeau, Jackie Onassis, and the infamous White House Chief of Staff, Hamilton Jordan, came out to be seen during the club's brief heyday. From musician standpoint, from a musical standpoint, Studio 54 did not seek to break new ground, but rather to feed its patrons a familiar diet of dance hits. Artists like Grace Jones, Donna Summer, and Gloria Gaynor all made live appearances there, but Studio 54 belonged to the DJs and to free entertainment provided to the free entertainment provided by the club's 
flamboyant staff and clientele. While disco reigned supreme on the pop charts, Studio 54 reigned supreme among discotheques, enjoying a golden era that lasted from its opening on this day in 1977 to its closing night party on February 4th, 1980, a party called, appropriately enough, the end of the modern day Gamora. I want to thank you for watching today, and as always, stay safe and stay blessed, and remember to smile, because I love you, but more importantly, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, loves you the most. And um, would you please give this video and go over and check out my other videos and give them a... I make haul videos, junk journal videos, vlogging with my family. I do some review videos. So go on over and check out some of those videos. And um, please leave a comment. That really helps my videos. And also what helps my videos and my channel is if you subscribe. So come on over and be a serendipity subby, won't you? All right, everybody. Have a blessed day. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.